Nate. Production and distribution of Disc Golf Live is made possible through the generous support of our underwriters. Thanks for your support. This episode of Disc Golf Live is ladies from end to end. We're going to start out our 2012 coverage of Disc Girls Gone Wild here on hole 7. Out on the legend course here at Sleepy Hollow State Park in Langsburg, Michigan. At stake today is a position in the skins match which will follow today's tournament. The top four amateurs will be paired with the top four professionals for a skins game. Oh, that's the two minute warning. We've got two minutes to go here. And then we'll have tea off. The first three groups we'll see here on number seven are ladies in the advanced amateur division. There were 14 gals in the division altogether. And quite a few have a legit shot at moving on to the skins portion of Disc Girls Gone Wild. Although only a buck seventy-five, this hole plays uphill and is nowhere near as wide open as it seems from this angle. Long upshots were the order of the day for this group. Toyo sits at 129 after two rounds and leads her card mates by quite a bit. This is the first in a trend of tough chain outs and near misses we were to witness here today. We'll know after this round if any of these gals have worked their way up to a position in the final nine skins match. Next on the tee here at Sleepy Hollow is a trio who started the round at 129 and 128. When we get down to the tee to shoot later on, viewers will have a better idea of the challenges confronting players here. Caddy there is one Al Sugar Shack, World Masters Champion. Not a bad player himself. Except for the occasional puck job, very few putts on this hole don't involve going around a tree or two. It will be pars around for this trio, and that brings the leading amateur players to the tee. Success off the tee continues to be elusive here today, for the amateurs at least. 127 and 128 were the starting scores for this group. 
Those are two round totals from the first day of play. That makes a total of seven players between 127 and 129, all within reach of the tournament title and a spot in the final nine Safari skins match. We'll have highlights of the skins match later in the show. Approach shots and longish putts have been about the best the amateurs have been able to offer here so far today. Thank you. You too. This group will all exit the hole with pars, leaving things to the professionals. Showing that the ladies know how to sort their pros from their ams, our first group dutifully posted two round scores, a few throws better than the leading amateurs. These three players sat at 122 and 23. Don't know if it was camera jinx or pressing too hard on this reachable hole, but things were grim for this trio. A newcomer to the pro ranks, Crystal Fromm was an amateur when we taped here last year. Lori Mullen will go on to take honors with a par. Lisa Harbor found no safe refuge in the trees. Nice putt to save bogey is about all Crystal can take from this hole. Our next trio sat at 120 or 121 to start. Hopefully one of these pros can get the better of this hole. We're starting to think it's camera jinx that's holding folks back. Lisa Warner finds trouble on her second shot and will have to lay up with her next for a bogey. Sarah DeMar doesn't have too much to work with from the left edge. And getting us off the schneid is Lori Merriman. No shutout today. We'll shift to the tee area for a look at the second card. There's the basket on number seven, almost blind. The cream has started to rise to the top now. Katrina Allen sat at 112 to start this round. <laughs> Not first available. <laughs> Jane Snyder also sat at 112. So dirty. A couple throws behind was Liz Carr. TJ Meisterheim sat at 118. A couple longish approach shots were executed before we took a break to search out Katrina's drive. I found her disc a bit past the hole on the right side. Chalk one up for the camera. Jane's drive may have not been on the line she intended, but you can't argue with the result. And now for the leading card. Paige Pierce started her third and final round with a slender one throw lead after a matched pair of 52s. By contrast, Val Jenkins was slow out of the gate with a 57, but responded with a 48 to sit one back. Aaron Oakley started in fourth, three back after going 53-54. Sue Stevens seems to play well for our camera. Viewers may have seen her on an earlier show, picking up the 2012 PDGA World Championship title in the Masters Division. It had some ugly in it, but it fared all right. Top card here at the 2012 This Girl's Going Wild coming in on 
Hole 7. There's another world champion, Nate Doss, on the bag for Val Jenkins, world champion herself. Like the majority today, tough approach shots were the norm for this group. Page ended up on the far right. Aaron kicked into a neighboring fairway, only to face a wall of trees. Susie was first round leader with a 49 and followed up with a 56 to sit one back. That will be a disappointing par for Susie. The others all have par putts remaining. After four heavily wooded holes, the eighth at Sleepy Hollow brings players to a series of somewhat more open holes. Aaron is the main force behind planning for this event, with able support from a number of others, including her caddy in the background, Matt Rinker. Kick out of the bush for Sue. Besides some nice prize money for finishing well in the main event, the pro ladies are all angling for a spot and some more cash in the final nine skins match, which follows. Good par save for Aaron Oakley. Par is around here on hole eight. The top card at the 2012. This girl's going wild. Hole nine here at the Legend Course at Sleepy Hollow. Plays over a little hill, down into a narrow spit of land with water on both sides. Throwing at us. We're back with the second card again on the signature ninth hole. This is typically the only backup on this course as players face grief all along this ribbon of fairway. That one had us jumping right in the middle of the fairway though. It's the approach shot to the basket, which really gives players pause here. The basket sits on a narrow ridge back. A few feet in either direction to the side of the basket brings water into play. TJ got into trouble on the left side and will end up with a five here. Liz's lie was determined uh, 
by the players to be in the water, right uh, on a sort of questionable level, but uh, I think if she tried to stand there, she'd sink up to her knee. At least that one's dry. Beautiful putt. Jane makes a nice four after an early tree on her drive. A nice four also for Katrina after being forced to play sideways on her second. An out of bounds penalty gives Liz a handful. Let's see how the top card tackles this hole. Beautiful. Serviceable. Well, that's how the top pros play this one. Double switcheroo here for Susie as she goes righty forehand. Val is in there, somewhere. These are our third shots for everyone. That's a nice three for Paige as she gains one on the field. Free fishing day here in Michigan. Nice day for some disc golf too. We headed back towards Tournament Central and happened across this group approaching on number 17. We'll take great shots anywhere we find them. Yeah! It's all right. Tell me your name so I know it for sure. Megan Matson. Nice shot, Megan. Now come the lead professionals on their closing hole. This hole might be in range for the farthest throwing gals at This Girl's Gone Wild, including Val. For most mortals, getting into a spot for a solid second shot is a more reasonable goal. Paige can get there. Nice. Aaron will need two to reach this pin and finds the center of the fairway. Sorry, I couldn't keep this in the boat. She leaves herself a tester, though. That's two in there after her drive blew into the trees. She'll have a testy par pot as well. Val found a pine on the left and will have a drop in par. Paige posted a 51 this round, the best score on the card to take first place. Sue left some putts out there but still posted 52, leaving her tied for second, two behind Paige. Today's 55 by Aaron, lost a little ground to the leaders. She's hoping to hang on to the fourth spot in the Safari Skins match. The champion will hold this one out for over 700 bucks, her share of a purse of over $2,000. The Val and Sue will split second and third place money. Val match Sue's 52 to finish out. Hugs around. Coming off the second card with a blistering 49 to edge Aaron out of fourth and a spot in the final nine Skins match was Katrina Allen. Later in the show, we'll be back as the top pros and amateurs pair up for the Disc Girls Gone Wild Safari Skins match.
The Professional Disc Golf Association is the governing body for the sport of disc golf. From local tournaments to the amateur and professional world championships, the PDGA oversees sanctioned events for disc golfers of all skill levels. The PDGA is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to promoting disc golf around the world. To learn more about the PDGA, visit www.pdga.com. Get out and play a round of disc golf. The sport of the future is here today. We return now to Central Michigan as the 2012 Disc Girls Gone Wild Safari Skins Match gets underway. On the pro side, Katrina Allen edged out local favorite Aaron Oakley for the final spot in this match. Among the amateurs, Toyo bested Rosie in a playoff for the chance at a share of $500 in skins. The introduction of the players we expected never materialized, and before we knew it, somebody was throwing. Jennifer is paired with Katrina Allen. Emma's got her fans here today. She's paired with another Michigan player, Sue Stevens, whose game is rounding into form. A few weeks after this, she'll go on to win the World Championship title in the Masters Division. Kat played in last year's skins match. She's got all kinds of shots in her bag, including a wicked turbo putt. Val rounds out this parry. Toyo eked into the fourth amateur spot today, and for her troubles, gets the winner for a partner, nice. Paige Pierce. Paige plays quickly. Here's Paige. The partner has missed. Cat and Val have also missed. Jennifer misses, but she's got a partner. Oh, that's going to push the first hole, most likely. Sue, after Emma's fine drive. That's a push on hole one here. The safari factor starts to come into play here. Finding a good vantage point on this sort of hole can be a problem. Susie's got Emma's back this time. Sue Stevens, veteran of the Skins game. Ooh. Val's partner may be on the beach, but she's not worried. Caught up in the long grass. Can't be said, the first two teams didn't get some good tries in. It's a chain out for Cat. Sue's drive left her team with an even shorter birdie putt. Sue Stevens with a push. Ooh. Two skins for Val and company. Val's caddy says, I'll take some of that with me. The first leg of this hole bends around to the right. After Val's drive sailed long, but into the trees, Cat picked up the slack nicely. They're playing past a basket here on the normal third hole, all the way to the basket of the fourth. Emma took all the pressure off Susie with this nice drive. Susie went into the bushes. So did Toyo. Paige put one around the corner. T 
team Emma Sue has gone. They're hoping for a push already. Money. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Val and her partner like that one. Paige executes a nice recovery shot from a compromise stance to keep her team in it. The shot from Jen gets her team safely through to the next fairway. After that, great up shots got three teams up pretty close looking at fours. It only takes two and the skin will carry over. Beautiful. Get it, girl. Get it, get it. Oh. Nice. 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 That was Nate Doss buzz, just by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Woo! Was that a four for uh, both you ladies? Yeah. All right, everybody else can pick up. It's a push. The fourth safari hole here today squeezes through Amando about that wide. That one made it. Katrina hit the gap as well. We missed Val's drive, changing the tape. She's well up the fairway. Team Emma Sue was out of it after two strikes. Paige made the gap, but not much more. And left two teams looking at long putts for Deuce, and both pros made it close. The skins now add up to 150 bucks. Right, There's off. another Mando here. There's the right side of it. Oh. Yeah. Nice shot. Team Gencat both hit early trees and they sit well back. Emma continues her strong driving. Yeah, hard, yeah. Tree troubles plague Toyo and Paige as well. Four missed putts surround the basket as two teams remain with a shot at Deuce. Solid bids, but no dice. This one will push, making the next hole good for 200 clams, cash money. Nice up. Hole six plays from a makeshift tee to a pin straight ahead. Turn. The first two teams were in the rough. Susie finds the fairway, leaving the best look at a two among the four teams. All right, baby. Nice. All right. All right. Farthest back off the tee, Val makes short work of this approach shot. This hole was quickly shaping up for a push, but not before Emma and Sue had a last chance at Deuce. Couple nice par putts later, this hole was another push. That's turbo putter. The seventh plays uphill with a wall of trees limiting access to the pin. Up beyond the trees, the basket is wide open. This one is worth $250. Yeah! Okay, this skin is worth $250. Team Valcat is making a habit of putting first. Not a money-making trend in this game.
The next two pro pairs are somewhat closer in. after the first two holes, but we've been pushing ever since. This is Katrina's drive. This is what it's all about. <laughs> that was a $250 skin. Nice little payout there. Hey, Big cash. <laughs> All the pressure's off for Team GenCat, with some cash already safely tucked away. Oh, it's a crush. Came in a little hot. Team Valcat has a little cash already as well. That's a strong bid for $50. Had to hide deeper in our guard bush than usual at the request of the lefty. She was going for us. We trust her. But the best drive of the bunch on this blind hole came from Paige Pierce. Yeah. Emma racks up another close bid. You can't spend those. Unfortunately, Val and Cat also whiff. Katrina launches an overhand from deep in the bushes. Get it, get it. Good run. Oh, nice. oh, oh, nice. $50 Last year's skins match here pushed from start to finish. Not so this year. Three teams have won at least something, with just Sue and Emma being shut out so far. In the grass. It's basically an island sort of thing. Um, however, because this is the last hole and it's $100, also, if the hole pushes, it'll be a CTP. Whoever is closest to the pin gets the money. Val parked and CTP. She and Cat will pick up another $100 whether or not another team pushes the hole. Emma gets the job done. This girl's going wild, 2012. And now, it's time to get back to Charlotte for some final round action at Worlds, featuring several familiar faces.